is the gravity of our solemn oath to serve the public. So we, bet, we better take our duty seriously as we also believe and submit to the Word of God for our own good and for the good of our nation. However, it is not just the holy men of the Scriptures who testify to the Bible's divine supremacy. There are also empirical evidences. Mr. Speaker and distinguished colleagues, ang Biblia po ay binubuo ng 66 books, 39 books sa Old Testament, 27 books naman sa New Testament. Sinulat ang, ang mga ito ng higit kumulang, sa, ng higit kumulang ng 40 writers, authors, in a span of 1,500 years. Most of these authors never met each other, never knew each other. They all came from diverse culture, cultures, eras, periods, geographical context. However, in an amazing stroke of divine genius, not a single contradiction can be found in the pages of the Bible. There may be minor differences in tenses or word of choices, but no substantial discrepancies have ever been found in this sacred book. Kaya napakalaking insulto na ang salita ng Diyos ay insulto, insultuhin ng sino mang tao. In fact, the 66 books complement one another in grand narrative, revealing God's grand master plan for the ages from eternity past to eternal good future. This grand master plan involves the salvation of mankind to the sacrificial death of the Lord Jesus Christ to redeem us from the power of sin and death. Madam Speaker, this is why so many people are willing to put their lives at a stake just to testify to the truth of the scriptures. Thousands of saints have been martyred in the past. Thousands will continue to fearlessly and boldly testify today that the Bible is the very word of God because they have personally experienced its power to save, heal, deliver, and transform their lives. In our own nation, we have respected and credible Filipinos whose lives were drastically transformed by the Bible. Alam natin nangyari sa Boxing World Champion, Senator Manny Pacquiao, ang sabi niya, dati siyang babaero, lubog sa sugal, at lahat na ng bisyo, subalit ng kababasa ng Bible na bago ang kanyang buhay. Kaya parang tumama ng ilang loto ang kanyang misis. Multi-talented Gary Valenciano, award-winning actress Connie Reyes, businessman, philanthropist Henry C. Jr., also known as Brother Big Boy, Doctors Big Big Mickey Bello, Hayden Co., and the list goes on. Well-known international personalities have also been famous for testifying that God transformed their lives through the Bible. Among them are cultural icons, Justin Bieber, Kenya, Kanye West, Tim Tebow, Stephen Curry of Warriors NBA basketball team, Jonathan Isaac, both are famous NBA players who have been testifying. They were changed by the Word of God. And of course, Steve Harvey, the famous Miss Universe host, has been proclaiming that he received the greatest gift of, of God, the gift of eternal life through the Word of God. Needless to say, I know our colleague here, Attorney Rupus, Congressman Rupus, had a research concerning the Bible, even George Washington, what a praising, who said, without the Word of God and without prayers, it's impossible to govern the nation. Even great scientific minds were known to be devout contemplators of the Holy Bible. Among them were Isaac Newton, Blaise Pascal, Johannes Kepler, and many more. The list goes on, Madam Speaker. Millions have experienced the empirical truth. The Bible changes lives because the Bible is the very Word of God. And every one of us in this August chamber can experience the same. Regardless of our past, regardless of our present, God can save, heal, deliver, transform each of us on a personal level and all of us and, and all our nation and, and, of course, our beloved nation. This leads me to my final point. Madam Speaker and dear colleagues, the Bible is the book which makes a person or a nation blessed and great. The, the Bible or the Word of God can make our nation great and reach the zenith of its God-given 
glorious destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is not only a religious book, it is also a manual for good governance. Kaya ito pong aking uh, decision na magbigay ng privileged speech sa oras na ito, sa mata ng kasaysayan at sa mata ng eternity, ay hindi lamang para ibigay ang isang simpleng mensahe at paalala sa honorable members of this August Chamber, the House of Representatives, 19th Congress, maging sa members ng Philippine Senate at this point of time of history, maging sa members headed by the executive branch, of course, President Bongbong Marcos, at maging sa, maging sa judicial branch of our government, of course, headed by the Supreme Court justices led by the, by, by the Chief Justice. Ito pong lahat ng itong minsahe kailangan ng sambay ng Pilipino. Ako po'y inuudyo ka ng Holy Spirit na huwag ko na lang basahin itong aking prepared personal speech bago ako magbigay ng conclusion. Gusto ko pong ipaalala sa lahat. Kung narinig natin ang mga minsahe kahapon sa people People's Assembly sa Davao City at sa Luneta, sa Luneta, pangunguna ng ating Pangulong Bongbong Marcos, sa Davao City, pangunguna ng dating Presidente Rodrigo Duterte. Sa mga taong walang discernment, sa mga taong walang pakialam, sa mga taong...